Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the 2S38, a currently tier 7 9.7 BR light tank that exists as a premium vehicle for the Russian ground forces tech tree. In this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about it, including its stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses. I'll give some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation on if I feel this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. As always, please consider subscribing if you'd like more content like this, as that would make you cooler than the Gaijin devs that decided to put a prototype into War Thunder as a premium vehicle and sell it for over 9,000 Golden Eagles. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Now I'll place the stats here on the side of the screen. Important stats to note are its speed, turret traverse, and reload rate. And before I truly get into the video, one important thing to note here is that I will be doing this review based on if it is a 9.7 and even considering if it becomes a 10.0 BR vehicle because it is very good at 9.7 and kind of suspect that it will be a 10.0 vehicle at some point in the near or distant future. With that said though, for how the 2S38 plays, if you've ever played the BMP2 or 3 or the BMD4 or even the Puma, this is kind of like those vehicles except on steroids. The 2S38 excels as a scout and a flanker as its 57mm to a 90 auto cannon when combined with its APF SDS will absolutely demolish enemies from the side. It has over 220mm of armor pen at max which will easily destroy all lightly armored vehicles and can destroy or disable MBTs with relative ease. When combined with its excellent though not absolutely amazing mobility and its Gen 3 thermals, the 2S38 can dominate battles from both near and far, especially considering that your armor is unlikely to stop any type of shell regardless of the distance that you are from the enemy, which means that you can also take this vehicle through tight city streets at least if you have a fast enough trigger finger. Unfortunately, depending on your perspective at least, the APF SDS is just weak enough where you will not be able to destroy most MBTs from the front so you may have to settle on destroying their tracks or their cannon and then going to their side and finishing them off. This however is what young people might consider to be a first world problem, as many vehicles do not have the ability to do this if they're struggling with a vehicle from the front, as most vehicles will have to reload and fire again and try to either disable a tank after a 6 plus second reload or hope for a good kill. This just highlights some of the versatility of the 2S38 as it can quickly adapt to the battle depending on the enemies that it's facing. Like Likely the most amazing feature on this vehicle, however, is the target track and lock ability that will allow it to lock onto enemy aircraft, be they scout drones, helicopters, fixed wing aircraft, or really anything. It can even track flares, though of course this won't really do anything and it's just kind of a waste of time. This when combined with its excellent programmable HE shell that has its distance set based on the laser rangefinder, as well as the phenomenal turret traverse and elevation angle on the 2S38, makes you into a serviceable SPAA when needed. So if you don't feel confident in your abilities to be a gun-based SPAA, no matter as the onboard computer will do all of the work and track the enemy for you. This feature alone will make the 2S38 indispensable, especially for high-tier Russian players that neglected to properly research SPAA. Now with that said, let's get into its strengths and weaknesses. And first for its strengths, the 2S38 features a fantastic 57mm to a 90 autocannon that has a variety of shell types, including APCBC, HE, APF SDS, and a programmable HE shell. Despite being a 57mm autocannon, the APF SDS has over 220mm of armor pen at a 5 second fire rate. Second, while not the fastest among Russian light vehicles, the 2S38 is still pretty darn quick. For its third strength, it has an excellent turret traverse and vertical guidance rate with its turret traverse rate being between 42 degrees per second and 60 degrees per second, depending of course on crew skill. For its fourth strength, it has fantastic Gen 3 thermals for both the gunner and commander. Fifth, it has an IRST auto track feature that allows it to automatically track onto aircraft, be they drones, helicopters, or full size fixed wing aircraft. This pairs well with the programmable HE shell that will detonate based on where you designate with your laser rangefinder. This is also aided by the fantastic 75 degree elevation angle that the cannon can achieve. Beyond this, the 2S38 has a crewless turret, which will help in protecting the small crew inside the vehicle. For its seventh strength, it features an auto loader, allowing for a fast firing rate that is similar though not as good as the Puma IFV. This also means that nothing barring a full cannon breach destruction will stop or slow its reloading. Beyond this, for its final few strengths, it has a laser warning system, it is amphibious, it carries smoke grenades, and it also has premium RP and SL bonuses. And now for its weaknesses. First, it has poor armor in that it is both thin and it also has no composite or ERA elements. While many people liken the 2S38 to the Puma, one area that the 2S38 is far worse than the Puma is its armor 
armor. While it is angled sharply enough to deflect some errant low-powered autocannons and stop some HMGs, it is simply not enough to stop the vast majority of anything that will be shooting at it. Secondly, it only has a three-man crew, which further reduces survivability. For its third weakness, while it is largely sufficient, you'll only have a 20-round magazine that you will need to reload fairly often. At a rate of over one second per shell to be reloaded into the magazine, you may be out of action for upwards of 20 seconds when reloading in full, which can be an eternity in a serious fight. For its fourth weakness, as with most Russian vehicles, the cannon depression is poor on the 2S38 at only 5 degrees. And finally, it only has an LMG as opposed to an HMG, though this really isn't such a big weakness. Now with the strengths and weaknesses out of the way, let's go over how I score this vehicle. First, for armament, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. I absolutely love the devastating 57mm autocannon on this vehicle. Between its high rate of fire, good armor pen, and ability to switch between types of ammo, even becoming effective as an SPAAG, the 2S38 has an uncommon ability to be a threat to any type of vehicle that it faces. Unfortunately, however, it does not have the highest armor pen, and as such, it will not be able to destroy most MBTs from the front, and will force the 2S38 into a flanking role, but that fits perfectly with its high speed and agility. The 2S38 is not as OP as many people want to claim, insofar as its cannon is concerned, but it certainly feels close. If it only had slightly more armor pen, this cannon would be unstoppable. For now, however, it is merely excellent. Now for its mobility, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. The 2S38 has fantastic mobility, stemming from a relatively powerful engine combined with relatively low weight. Because of this, it has a power to weight ratio of 23.25 horsepower per ton, which is great. Among Russian light vehicles, however, such as the BMP3 that it was based on, as well as the BMP4, it is still slower, as those have between 10 and around 40% higher power to weight ratio. Regardless, the 2S38 is still plenty quick and will be able to skirt the flanks of a map or capture control points nearly as well as any other vehicle vehicle that it will face. While it isn't absolutely fantastic in the mobility category, it is still very good and is more than sufficient. Now for survivability, I give it a 3 out of 10. As with essentially any other vehicle in this game, the 2S38 comes with a major trade-off for its speed and power, and that comes in the form of it lacking armor. While the armor on the 2S38 is surprisingly thick in some areas, at 43mm around the side and the rear, as well as the lower glacis being 70mm thick when considering the dozer blade, it isn't sufficient enough to stop most shots fired at you. Because of this, you will die quite easily and often if you're not careful. Further, you only have a three-man crew, which will dip its survivability even further. The only true positive to this vehicle, insofar as survivability is concerned, is the fact that it has a crewless turret, which helps to a surprising degree. Now, overall, I give it a 7.25 out of 10. While some people may say that this vehicle is OP and pay to win, I feel that it is simply just very good. This is not the case like what we have with the Russian SU-11, where that vehicle performs better than planes with a full BR above, but I can still see the 2S38 being very, very powerful at 9.7 BR, or in all likelihood still being very good at 10.0 BR, which I foresee it going to. I'm stuck between a 7.25 and 7.5 overall rating for this vehicle, but with the consideration that I think that this will have a BR increase again to 10.0 BR from its current 9.7 BR, and because I plan on this review still being relevant at 10.0 BR, I do have to take that into consideration. With all that said, if the 2S38 remains at 9.7 BR, I give it a 7.5 out of 10, whereas it'll drop slightly to 7.25 out of 10 if it gets to 10.0 OBR. Nothing substantial and still one of the best scores I've ever given regardless. So do I recommend this vehicle? If it wasn't already apparent, yes I do. While it isn't the crazy powerful vehicle that most people assumed it would be prior to release, it is still powerful and is thus very good in game. For reference, I feel that the BMP2M at 9.3 BR with its APF SDS and ATGM launcher is superior to the 2S38 at 9.7 BR, but not by a wide margin. Regardless, because of the nature of the 2S38, you have a vehicle that is usable with an 11.0 BR lineup, still acting effectively as a scout, flanker, base capper, or even as an SPAA. The versatility of this tank is what gives it its primary strength, and because of that, I also give it my Tankenstein seal of approval. Regardless of if it sits at 9.7 BR or 10.0 BR, the 2S38 will be extremely effective and is one of the best premium tanks that you can purchase. Purchase. Plus, if you don't care about the premium time and Golden Eagles given through premium packs, you're actually saving money by purchasing the 2S38 as opposed to, for example, the T72 AV Terms, of which costs $60 USD when not on sale, with the 2S38 costing 9,090 Golden Eagles or around $45 USD if you're purchasing GE 
GE from the War Thunder website. But yes, the 2S38 is what you get when you add a vehicle that is still actually in trials and is so advanced that it has yet to be accepted in its service with the Russian military. But of course, those are the times that we live in. That said though, thank you all so much for watching. Please, again, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video as both of those things will help me tremendously. Either way though, thanks again and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.